I was sent this video over on Instagram by a subscriber and asked can I replicate these effects in DaVinci Resolve. I got you, homie. Let's go. First and foremost, you need to rotoscope your subject. You can follow either one of these videos on how to do that. And despite whatever way you rotoscope your subject, I recommend rendering your subject in place. This saves on a lot of computer power when replicating these effects. You just simply right click, go to render in place. On the codec, you want to choose DNHR. On a type, you can choose 444 12-bit, 10-bit, or HQ. I recommend 12-bit or 10-bit depending on whether or not you're going to be color grading the clip. And HQ if you just want a high quality render of your subject with an alpha background. That means the only thing will be visible is your subject and everything else will be transparent. I got a clip from Moneybag Yo's video. My top clip is my rotoscope clip, which you can see here. And then my second clip is just the background clip. I'm gonna select both of those, hit Shift F to create a new fusion clip and enter into fusion. My media one is my background clip. If I hit two on the keyboard, the little indicator here, I can see this is the original background clip. I'm gonna move it down here. And I'm gonna move media two. If I hit two on the keyboard, I know this is my rotoscope subject. I'm gonna go back over to my media out, hit two on the keyboard to get a view of my full composition. I'm gonna select the media two. Hit control and space, and I'm gonna search for duplicate node. I'm actually gonna bring it off to the side. I'm gonna take the output of my media two connected to the duplicate node, and then take the output of the duplicate node connected to that merge one. It's gonna create an, a second merge. I'm going to inspect the tab on the copies. I'm gonna double click and type in four. And now I'm gonna use the center X and Y axis to create an animation. So I'm going go to my first frame. I'm gonna set the keyframe. I'm gonna go to frame 10. And then I'm just gonna I'm gonna select my X axis and I'm gonna scroll over to the left to create the copies. Now in the original video, it kind of comes out quickly and abruptly. So I'm gonna go into my, now if you remember, I'm gonna go down to close to the end of my clip. I'm gonna go to frame 34 and I'm gonna set another keyframe. That way my copies will remain until frame 34. And then I'm gonna go to frame 37, right before the end. I'm gonna go back to my inspector tab, right click, and then select default. So from frame zero to 10, corrects the copies. It's gonna hold that animation. When you get to frame 34, that's gonna begin the process of you returning back to default. I'm gonna go into my spline editor. I'm gonna select this icon here to zoom to fit. I'm just gonna move this up a little bit so I can get a better view. Now the first two keyframes where my copies are created, I'm gonna box select those. I'm gonna right click, go to ease, and then I'm gonna select out cubic. This is gonna create an ease out effect where it starts off fast and slow and slow down towards the end of the animation. Then the one towards the back, I'm gonna select box select those, right click, go to ease, I'm gonna select ease in, which of course is the opposite, and they'll slowly return back. Well, kind of speed up first and then slowly, slow, well, slow down rather, when you get to frame 37. In the original effect, the subject is kind of more or less coming out towards the camera as well. So I'm gonna select a duplicate node, hit control space, and we're gonna search for DVE. And so of the DVE node, we're gonna go into the Spectre tab, and we're gonna move the Y axis to the right slightly basically kind of give it that kind of give it that effect that it's coming out towards the screen i'm gonna hold control and scroll my mouse wheel down to zoom out i'm also going to change the pivot point so go here to pivot and then i'm going to move this up just a little bit and the reason i'm doing that because if you go if i double click this to reset it and zoom out you can see the original subject so we move this pivot point over so slightly and it helps it to realign itself Actually, we're going to go back to duplicate node, go into settings, activate the motion blur. I'm going to leave it at 2 at 180 for right now. For the next part of the effect, we're going to resize money back. So I'm actually going to take my clip and move it up above the previous effect we just did. This part here is relatively short, so I'm only going to use so much of the framing. I'm going to split the clip and then move this back down. And this part here, I'm going to rotoscope. A quick tip too, if you use Magic Mags a lot like I do, you can hit control space, magic mask, bring it up. You can actually just take it and drag it up into the, I, I put it right here where the mask are. As you see the little icon here, it says magic mask. Instead of me having to go into the toolbar, I can just grab it from there. So now I have the subject rotoscoped out and rendered in place. I'm gonna select media one and grab a transform node. Go back to my first frame and just gonna bring it all the way down to zero. And then I'm gonna move the pivot point 
down to the bottom of the frame. I'm gonna go back to the inspector tab and I'm gonna set a keyframe on the size. And then I'm gonna go to frame 10, because I only got 15 frames here to work with. Then I'm gonna select this little white indicator. That's gonna resize my subject back to the default state. But also you'll notice that it resizes from the bottom up. Whereas if you have to pivot at the default point, it'll just go from the center up. So if we go back and hit, I'm gonna hit Control Z to go back. So with that pivot point at the bottom, it's gonna size up from the bottom. Go to the spline, select the transform. You can zoom to fit so you can see your keyframes. I'm gonna select all and I'm just gonna hit S to smooth. And I'm gonna make sure I go into settings and turn on my motion blur. Next effect in the original clip is a slight it's a really quick inverted flash. So I go into the fix tab, I'm gonna grab my adjustment clip, I'm gonna click on it and hit control D. I'm gonna make it roughly like 12 frames. I'm gonna click on frames and make it 12. That might be a little bit too long, but we'll see in a second. Then I'm gonna go into open FX, go to the search bar here, oh, search bar and type in inverted. I'm gonna drag the inverted color effect onto the adjustment clip, play it back. It's a quick flash, like I said, it's a little too long. So I'm just gonna grab the little tail end over here and shorten it down. A little quick little flash, and then with this selected, you can go into the spec tab. You can change the different colors. I'm gonna highlight it again. So based on unchecking one of the different channels, we'll create a different color effect. And just kind of mess around with them to see which one you want. The inverted flash acts kind of as a transition to the to this background warp effect. So I rotoscope money bag here, and then I got the background clip. I'm gonna right click on it and open it in Fusion. With media one selected, I'm gonna grab a transform node. I'm gonna go over the inspector tab on the edges and change from canvas to mirror. Then I'm gonna go to the last frame of this subject, or this clip rather, and I'm gonna set a keyframe on the center X and Y axis. I go back to the first frame and I'm just gonna move this to the side. You can move it left or right, however you wanna do it. And basically just wanna create a warp effect. So now if you play that back, it's gonna just continuously warp around. Then I'm gonna go into settings and turn on my motion blur. I'm just gonna cause a blur background. And once again, spline, select the transform one, and I'm gonna hit and select them all and then hit X to smooth. So now right as it flash, you get the background warp effect, which actually comes in really nice with this the little zoom in on him. For the last part is the spin effect. It's more or less the same setup. Got another rotoscope of money bag. Take the bottom clip, which is the background, and right click, open the infusion. And then infusion, I'm gonna grab a, make sure you really want select it, grab the transform node, and more or less gonna repeat the same process. Go into edges, I'm gonna change this to mirror. But instead of activating a keyframe on the center X and Y, we're gonna use the angle. So I'm gonna go to the last frame, set a keyframe for angle at zero. And then I'm gonna go to the first frame, and you can, you can use a random number. I'm actually gonna make it do a complete 360. So I'm just type in, or well, double click, and then type in 360, hit enter. So now it's gonna create a 360 warp. And the same thing, motion blur, and turn on your spline. That's a complete breakdown of the clip. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.